Hey guys, Outdoor Enthusiast 88 here again with another review for you today. Today I'm reviewing two popular tech products. Now I know that's a little off the norm from what we usually do here. EDC Pocket Dump. But nonetheless, I want to kind of talk to you guys a little bit about what I think about these two products. I've been testing them for a little over a month now. The Apple TV is the current generation, fourth generation. It came out in late 2015. The Amazon Fire TV is the newest, newest 2016 edition. And I've been testing them, like I said, for about a month now, um, simultaneously trying out different apps. Uh, we watched uh, live TV on here through uh, DirecTV Now. Uh, we used to have like Voodoo, Sling, those kind of things. So we haven't had cable for a while, but I've been streaming TV, Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime, uh, iTunes, you name it. So just want to kind of walk through some of the features. We're going to talk about the packaging first, followed by the devices themselves, and then kind of move into what the software can do and show you guys on my TV kind of what each one does and some of the pros and cons of these things. So let's jump right in. So for the packaging, Apple TV, Apple TV here has 32 gigabyte and there's also a 64 gigabyte. Price, retail price on a 32 is $149.99. A little steep, 64 gigabyte with memory, not expandable by the way, the memory is not expandable, is $199.99. Typical Apple, Apple packaging. This is actually the charging cable that comes for the remote control. Remote control is rechargeable, which is a cool option there. Um, you know, everything's wrapped in plastic when you get it. You got cardboard inserts everywhere, keeping everything nice and organized. You know, nice Apple packaging. Moving on over to the Fire TV. Amazon has, you know, a little more details on their box and on their packaging. Talks a little more about what is included, what it can do. All that good stuff. Uh, obviously this has Alexa, which is like a um, voice to talk kind of setup and um, you know, voice to text and then uh, Amazon, I'm sorry, Apple actually has uh, the Siri. So which is kind of cool. Some more details here. Nice packaging, real similar, nice high quality box. Uh, you know, a little bit of orange there. You know, a little plastic wrap on everything slots, you know, for all the accessories and everything comes with it. So pretty neat, you know, uh, I think Amazon really did a good job on this right here on the Fire TV, especially the new one. And there's also a new Fire Stick that came out. Um, you, know, I've, you know, Amazon has had its uh, troubles in the past. I think we know what we're talking about here. But, you know, Apple has iffy products sometimes too, so it's just something to think about. I will say an honorable mention would be the Roku series. We've actually had this Roku 2 here for a good few years now, like two and a half years or so. Um, there's obviously, I think there's a Roku 3 and a Roku 4 now. Um, we actually had a Roku XD, one of the first models back in 2010. Um, I do like Roku, but I will say it's kind of has its twerks. Um, it's not, I don't think it's up to par, especially the one I have on the two and I haven't tested the four, but the two is not up to par with how fast these two new devices are on the table here. So I was just kind of honorable mention. If you have, if you're a Roku fan, Roku four is probably worth checking out. But so yeah, back to these right here. Uh, let's start with the cables. So this is all that comes with it. You have to, besides the charging cable and the remote control for the Apple TV, this is all that comes with it. Uh, you have to get your own HDMI cable. If you if you want to expand the memory on the Amazon, you're going to want to get your own uh, micro SD, all that good stuff. So the cables are kind of cool. So Apple went with a more kind of high end table, high end cable. So you look at it and it's actually a tangle free design. Notice that it's kind of pops, <laughs> pops open, um, you know, simple design, simple plug. Kind of cool. Amazon's cable, more traditional, uh, you know, single outlet here. Um, you know, it's nice, it's shiny, it's cool, you know. A little bit bigger, which is kind of annoying if you don't want to fill up a lot of spots on that power strip, but nonetheless, it functions fine. You know, I, like, I do like, I think, the Apple's ability to be thin. I think that's much smarter just to be able to have to deal with if you have like eight things plugged into one power strip, you don't have to finagle them around to fit this bigger box here. So the box itself, this is the Apple TV here. 
really nice um, kind of a little bit rubberized bottom to it you know it's not as slick as the top or the sides are the back has a power outlet you have the HDMI you have a USB-C and you have your um, Ethernet more control kind of cool real sleek there's a rechargeable port on the bottom here you have a menu button, screen button, kind of almost like a home button actually. Uh, you have a Siri, pause play, volume controls, you can actually link your uh, sound bar to it and I'll show you guys that. This is all a touchpad up here, nothing down here, it's kind of just a slick surface that gets nice thumbprints all over it. Touchpad right here, audible clicks, Amazon Fire TV box, similar, rubberized kind of bottom to it, texture, shiny matte top pretty much exactly the same except much thinner so really take it or leave it uh, Amazon is lighter so that's kind of cool look in the back here power HDMI Ethernet micro SD expandable memory if you're into downloading a bunch of movies want to leave them on here games whatever uh, USB connecting different USB devices more control, a little more traditional, more control. Battery operated, comes with Amazon batteries. AAA. Slides on like that pretty easily. Alexa. Microphone up top. There's a wheel. Click any direction you want. Middle enter button. You got your uh, back, home, settings, and select and guide and stuff. Uh, fast forward, reverse, rewind, whatever play pause you know typical design really nice uh, they're both uh, really sleek um, and the apples a little thinner obviously or a lot thinner but you know take it as it is so I did take the liberty of printing off some cool things here I want to show you guys if you want to take a pause there take a look I'll put them up a little closer here so here are the specs just to let you guys know what we're looking at here um, you know, obviously I mentioned the Apple TV has not expanded, expandable memory, but it's also a dual core with their A8 chip, 64-bit, 2 gigabytes of RAM, Ethernet, Wi-Fi, matching the same as uh, the Amazon Fire, Bluetooth, USB-C in the back, 1080p, Full HD. You look at the Amazon Fire, 8 gigabyte capacity internal, but you can also expand up to 128 gigabyte. Something to think about, quad core, and I'll, I did notice a quad core does kick in quite often um, when you're running a lot of the bigger apps and wanting to watch movies and stuff, it's quite fast. Uh, two gigabytes of RAM, same thing, Ethernet, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, USB in the back, but 4K, 2160p, that's awesome. Apple has not released a 4K edition as of January 2017, but hopefully in the future. Uh, price point, like I said, I mentioned the Apple is uh, about 149 for the 32 gigabyte, 199 for the 64 gigabyte. That's about as good as it gets unless you get a used one. The Amazon Fire TV is 89.99, sometimes on sale for 79.99. Keep an eye on for that. However, Amazon is on back order quite often, so something to think about. I think they're on back order for another month now at this point. But let's go uh, turn the camera on over the TV and let's uh, walk through some of these apps, talk about pros and cons of each of them and uh, see where it goes. All right guys, so up first is the Apple TV. Here's the remote right here. Uh, you got the touchpad, so you can actually go and cycle through apps. You can go and go as fast as you want. You can go one by one. I mean, it gets some time to get used to, but you know, you just click and it opens right up. You can scroll through stuff. I mean, it gets definitely takes some time to get used to, but it's not too bad. The menu button here is kind of the back button. The home button here takes you home every time, depending on where you are. Now, one of the negatives I would say is I don't like this watch now screen. They suggest all these different shows that they think you should watch now, judging on what you have been watching on the device. Um, so I don't really like how it always, when you hit the home button, which is right here, hit this home button, it always takes you to this watch now and you have to hit it again to actually go and bring them to the main screen here with all your apps. Cause I don't really need some of these suggestions either. So that's kind of a weird thing. Um, Siri works really well. Here it is right there. 
You can just go hold it down. Open Hulu. Brings Hulu up real quick. Find Scrubs. You can search for different things. It'll tell you right there on, it'll say on Hulu, Netflix, iTunes, you know, whatever you want to do. Uh, obviously, a lot of what the Apple TV is is trying to push you to get iTunes, buy iTunes movies, rent iTunes movies, rent shows, buy shows, all that good stuff. Use the App Store. And the App Store, I think, is cool because you can link it up with your Mac products. If you already have any Apple products, like a MacBook, you have iPhone, iPad, whatever, you know, it's neat how those can all link into this system. And you can actually broadcast your Apple uh, iPhone onto the screen or your tablet, or you can link your computer to it. So you can play games off your phone, you can watch shows, uh, the volume goes right through the sound bar. Um, and speaking of volume, the volume, once you set this product up, the Apple TV, you actually the volume controls right on the remote. So you actually control the volume of your sound bar, of your TV, whichever you want. I did it to my uh, sound bar below the TV here. And then also to turn on and off the TV, there's a button right here, the home button. So you have the menu button, which is kind of like a back button. Home button, you actually hold down and you turn on and off the TV, either sleep or cancel. Um, and then when it's off, of course, you hold the, that button again, it'll turn the TV on. So that's a really cool feature, I think, that Apple thought of. Um, but I do think the apps, because it's iTunes and Apple uh, kind of influence, you really, you don't see like Voodoo, you don't see uh, PlayStation View, you don't see, um, you know, some of the other TV uh, and movie rental things like, um, Obviously, Amazon is a big one. You won't see Amazon on here of any type of Amazon. Uh, you can't go and like rent, uh, watch Prime or anything on there. So, because they're not as open of a platform, because typically Apple is kind of closed and knit, and that's where a lot of people complain about Apple. A lot of people like Android for the more open market and all that. So, that's a negative in my mind. Uh, the touchpad, something to think about is this is the fast forward and rewind. And what's interesting is it's a neat touchpad on the remote control, but when you're watching a show, like sometimes you might pick this remote up and it's not on sleep. What it is is you pick it and if you hit it for more than like two or three seconds in either direction, it's gonna start fast forwarding your show. So like, you know, unless you're real quick and or delicate to pick up this remote, that is a design flaw, I think, just cause you would think they'd hold it on to sleep and then maybe you have to click it and then fast forward rewind. So fast forward rewind's a little quonky on this thing. Um, it's not the greatest, I don't think. I mean, it's a little, it's, it's easy to get used to because you just hold it to the right and it'll fast forward like 10 seconds, hold it further and it'll fast forward like 30 seconds and like, you know, it's trying to skip ahead. Um, but that's kind of weird, I think, the fact that if you pick it up wrong, it'll actually mess up, mess it up a little bit. Um, the remote control is rechargeable. Like we mentioned right here, uh, it lasts, it says, up to three months, which is kind of cool. Um, I don't know, what else uh, am I missing, guys? I mean, the um, you know everything's out of the App Store with here, so it's all based on your Apple App Store. Um, it's really laid out just like a tablet. You have all your apps here. You can go, there is Amazon to purchase, but you can't, um, that's just typically your uh, Amazon cart. It's not, you know, it's not something where you can watch movies or anything like that. Um, but uh, you can do like, there's all different kinds of app you can get. We actually do um, DirecTV Now. I don't know if you guys have heard of that one yet, but that is, our primary cable um, setup right now, which is awesome. We love it so far. Uh, it's actually how I got this Apple TV to test for you guys. Uh, you sign up for like three months, get a free one, I think it was, so kind of cool. Uh, Pandora, YouTube, HBO Go, Cartoon Network, Netflix, Hulu, you know, typical, and there's a bunch more. Um, we typically just watch, you know, these three right here um, for pretty much everything we do. Sometimes HBO, for Game of Thrones, or different movies and things. And of course, YouTube, catching up on that YouTube, guys. So definitely subscribe to the channel. And uh, let's see, I think that wraps it up. I mean, I mentioned the no 4K on this is kind of uh, not great for the price. Um, if you're a big Apple fanboy, this is probably right down your alley, but no 4K, 150 bucks, a couple of big negatives uh, in my eyes. But you know, let's take a look at Amazon and uh, let you guys choose and what you think. All right guys, so Amazon Fire TV is up next to test out. Here is the platform, kind of like your initial homepage. Um, you can go down here and it'll talk about different games. It'll give you a quick little uh, promotional uh, trailers for some stuff. Uh, which is kind of cool, but then you go down here, you got all your recent apps, you got your apps and your games. Uh, you keep on going, you can get to uh, recommendations, kind of like Netflix right there, like Netflix recommendations, um, Prime recommendations, best of TV, 
this week's apps. I mean, it gives you suggestions on new exciting things. Um, and if you go all the way to the top on this platform, you know, you have some banners. There's a lot of ads. I mean, Amazon's really pushing for use using Amazon's uh, products and services. So obviously, if you're already big into Amazon, like a lot of people are, you already are a Prime member, then this might fit right in with, for you right now. So you got your videos, you got your movies, TV shows, and you got your app store. Now, this app store here uh, basically has a ton of apps. I mean, there's thousands and thousands of apps to pick from. Um, I want to say it's actually probably more than the Apple Store just because of the way it's set up. I mean, you can go and pick from, you know, you have all the ones that Apple has Netflix, Hulu, DirecTV, Sling TV, uh, YouTube, um, and you got a bunch of ones that are up and coming Red Bull TV, NBA, uh, TED, Sky News, UFC, all that good stuff. You know, Cartoon Network, Sirius XM, ton of apps, even local apps. I mean, look, you got local New York, San Francisco, Philly, Raleigh, Durham, um, you know, Houston News, and it's really cool. And then, obviously, every time you hit the home button here, it goes right back to your home. I do like that. Simple, no two step process. You don't get thrown into a uh, most recent or suggested view. Uh, kind of like the Apple does. I think that's a good thing. Uh, the remote isn't bad. I mean, the touchpad is really nice. I mean, it's very tactile. Uh, you can go and scroll through pretty quick. You know, it's not bad at all. Uh, you hold down the Alexa button here. Open Hulu. Here's Hulu. Opens Hulu right away. That quad core is going streaming fast. Uh, works just fine. Um, you actually go and hold it down again. What's the weather in Houston today? In Houston, Texas. It's 57 degrees. So it's very nice platform. Alexa is leaps and bounds above Siri, I think, in terms of just how smooth you can order things, um, and or actually smooth you can say things and she'll actually understand. Uh, Siri works similar. You can obviously open any app you want on the Apple TV with Siri. All that good stuff. Uh, the 4K and the all the HD quality and stuff that comes out of the Amazon Fire TV is outstanding. Uh, we don't have a 4K, but I have seen it tested in 4K. Um, a buddy of mine has one with a 4K TV, so 4K, of course, is the next big thing. Higher HD, higher resolution, get to see all those wrinkles on someone's face, which is very exciting, right? So uh, the other thing you do is actually hold it down. What's your deals today? I have several exclusive deals today, including wickedly priced. So Alexa has her own deals. Uh, everything's linked on Amazon. They want you to buy stuff. Um, sometimes they're really good. Sometimes they're just so-so deals. It's pretty cool, though. Talking about what you want. Um, you can open the store. Uh, you have your Prime photos. So kind of like iPhotos that was on the actual setup before, like iTunes as well. Uh, the, your music, your photos that you have through Amazon, if you use Amazon versus iTunes or whatever, is already on here. Um, I think I know Pandora's on here. Uh, I haven't checked Spotify. Let's see, let's see. Uh, Pandora, these are the ones I've tried. Um, you know, all that stuff works really good. FX now, I mean, if you have a cable subscription, um, you know, I could probably show you guys real quick Direct TV now, give you guys kind of an idea on what that looks like real quick. Uh, everything's super fast. Um, you know, buffering, it's sometimes the app. I know Direct TV now is iffy depending on the day, not time of day. Um, see if I'm to even find the guide on this. It's a little different than the Apple TV. So DirecTV Now is a new service, uh, kind of like Sling TV, PlayStation View, but it's streaming over internet and it's only $30, I think 35 bucks a month. So that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Um, it's all this live stuff. I mean, it's not instant like cable, but it's getting better. You know, it's way better than Sling TV was. Sling TV was kind of hit and miss for a while, so. Uh, yeah, so let's go back to the table, guys, and uh, go over any last minute notes I have, and then um, I'll let you know which one I would pick. So you saw what these devices can do. You saw the packaging. You saw what it looks like when you pull it out of the box. You saw the style of the box themselves. You saw the actual uh, remote controls, how they're used, the platform, the software, how quick it is, all that good stuff, what the apps are, what the app stores look like, what you can get, what you can not get, you know, all that good stuff. 
So what it comes down to is obviously you have Amazon, a heavy Amazon base. I mean, there's a lot of Amazon fanboys out there, right? I mean, a lot of people like Amazon. It's the way of the future, buy online, all that good stuff, stream everything. Everything's streamed. You can even put all your photos. Um, you know, there's apps on your phone that you back up all your photos to with Amazon Prime Photos. Um, and same thing with Apple though. Apple, you know, everything's in the cloud, all that good stuff. You got the Siri, you got Alexa. You know, they're both head to head, head to head, I gotta say. I mean, but if, if it was me, I would say Amazon Fire TV. I think this is a clear winner. I mean, I, I just gotta say, I mean, I haven't had any problems with either devices, but I mean, I like the design of the Apple TV. I like the remote a lot better. I think the fact that you can control the TV and the volume, all that good stuff through the remote control is phenomenal. But the price point isn't there. I don't think that it's worth almost twice as much as the Fire TV. I just don't. And I think that, you know, with Alexa and with Amazon, you know, being a big powerhouse now, I mean, the Amazon Echo and Echo Dot and those things were hugely popular this past holiday season. And they're only going to get more popular as smart homes become more and more of a thing. Plus, it's already 4K enabled with a quad core, screaming fast. So, you know, I just don't see the Apple TV being worth that much more for the price and you still have limited Apple capabilities. Um, you can't expand the memory. You can't uh, go and, um, you know, you can't use Siri as much to like buy stuff. You don't have any good deals. I mean, uh, and you're never gonna find any sales or anything like that. And iTunes is, you know, hit and miss on selection and what you wanna get out of it. So, so yeah, Amazon Fire TV guys. I mean, you know, you see a lot of reviews saying, you know, uh, someone has to pick one. Amazon Fire TV. I love Apple, I love Amazon. I'm gonna go with Amazon. Well, hey, thanks for watching, guys. If you have any uh, questions at all below, I'll try to answer them, uh, help you guys figure out which, which way you wanna go. Um, but you know, definitely subscribe to my channel, it really helps me out. Like this video, and uh, have a good one. Mm -hmm.